Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're going to have a little chat about expression selectors in text animators. All right, so check uh, check it out. All right, that's that title card is really just made there for just that. All right, um, so in the first one, we're going to kind of go over uh, how expression selectors work. Now, it's kind of a dark art. On the surface, it's kind of simple, but it gets complex really quickly. And that's not just me saying it. Uh, I've actually heard that from people that actually work on After Effects. So we're going to add an animator, right? We're going to put, you know, fill color. This is just so we can see kind of what's being affected. And we're going to put an expression selector on there. We're going to leave the range on there and you can add a new one over here under add and selector. So when we get that, we're going to get something like this. And obviously there's an expression on here, although this for some reason has no uh, thing indicating other than this little disclosure triangle that there's actually an, uh, an expression on here because these don't work exactly like expressions do. This value doesn't change based on time or anything on here. It's not reevaluated like that. As far as my understanding goes, this expression is actually evaluated per character. So by default, you're given this selector value, which from what I can tell is this range, although later on it kind of fails at that. I think this is actually like an array, but it's kind of hard to say because sometimes this means like exactly from zero to 100 based on how these are selected. And that's how it kind of seems to be here if you play around with a range. So, you know, if you move this around like you normally would, it kind of goes through. The reason why it's darker on the one side is because this is multiplied by the text index over the text total. So from what I can tell, the index is unlike most arrays. This one starts at one so that this one is affected, but it's only affected one out of, I think there's 12 characters here. So one twelfth as much as this one. This one is affected 12 out of 12, 11 out of 12 because it's index over the total. So that's why it kind of gives you a nice gradient. So if you're just looking to make a gradient, you're done now. You can just close this and, and we're, we're good. But if you want to continue, uh, let's keep going. So this effect is why I initially uh, used this expression selector a long time ago. And since then, I've only used it pretty much once because I never really took the time to figure out how it works. So this is what it does. So you can go here and you can see where the X's are to move them to the top. Um, the original thing I found actually says to make another animator and move the anchor point and stuff, but you don't have to do that because that would move the position and you have to mess around. Just move the anchor point. So this expression is basically, I think, based off a of Dan Ebert script. I mean, you know, what isn't because that guy is awesome. Basically, you animate the amount here and it takes the amount and uh, checks the value at time for each one of these things using the index and calculates where it should be and adds some bounce to it. Some swing in this case. I'm going to make this project downloadable so you can just have this. I'm not really going to go through how this works. I just want you to see that this is another way to use it. So in this next one, we're going to do, uh, we're going to, we're going to play with the lines here, right? Cause you can change this from characters and have every other character be a thing, right? Or change it to lines. So how do you do that? All right. So we're going to do a simple modulus right here. So this one is basically if the text index, so whatever number, and in this case it's line, so in this case it's one, in this case it's two. If modulus two, that means we're gonna basically divide by two and whatever the remainder is, we're gonna keep. So here this can only be one or zero. So if it turns out to be one, we're gonna set this value of this whole line to zero, otherwise 100. Zero means the amount is zero. So that means no color will be applied to this. So the first one is one. One divided by two leaves us with the remainder of one, which means this is gonna be set to zero amount. 2 divided by 2 is 0. That means this one's going to be set to 100. So you can see how that can make lines, right? And then you can actually use that for some other useful stuff like more lines. And say you had like a table or something, maybe like a bunch of like cities or something. You want to make things, you know, like uh, every, every other line is colored differently. And then you can have a whole list of cities like Tampa, New York, L.A., Istanbul or Constantinople. Is it Istanbul or Constantinople? Eh, never mind. And then I thought the last advanced tutorial that we did... I had a problem making the circle effect loop around. I couldn't keep it going. So I thought maybe I could play around and figure that out. So I tried something else, uh, and this just modulus is based on the time. So it's time times 100, so it's kind of quick. And then we're modulusing through 100. That means our remainder values are going to be from 0 to 100. So in that case, that means this amount will just keep going. It'll go from 0 to 100, and then back, from, back to 0 to 100 over and over and over again. Uh, then I was like, I don't want it to flash in between. I wanted to smoothly go back. So then I worked on it some more. I gave this thing an angle expression control so that it could evolve. So here we have the evolution. It's tied to that control. Then we set a new variable. Val equals evolution divided by 360. 
modulus one. So that's gonna give us the remainder. So as this goes from zero to 360, right? Or whatever value, if it's 720 divided by 360, modulus one, modulus one in this case is going to give us the value of the decimal. So if the value is less than 0.5, we're gonna go from, we're gonna linear it from zero to 0.5 of that value. And it's gonna go from zero to 100. And anything over that, it's gonna go back in the other direction from 100 to zero. And that's gonna get us our ramp, as you can see. So then I kept going and I wanted to see if I could loop it through the text, right? And look at that, I did. I'm gonna open that up. And as you can see, we're adding basically the same kind of value at time expression that was in the swing down. So then I started working on the line from the other tutorial. And as you can see, it doesn't quite match up. However, if you let it evolve a little bit, it does right there. So I didn't really try to smooth anything out with the points or anything, because as far as I'm concerned, this doesn't really work, but it's interesting. I'm gonna have to play with it. Maybe I can get it in the future. So then I started to play around with things that it actually could work with. And this is an effect that you couldn't really get with the regular range selector the way I wanted it. And this is just to show you the possibilities of the expression selector. So I will explain this one a little bit. Basically this one takes the value at time of each index based on how far it is around the circle. And then we seed random with the text index and we set it to timeless so that it's always the same random value. We basically have a slider for amplitude. And what we do is we multiply that value times random from one to that amplitude. The amplitude is animated back down to one, which is why it all evens back out at the end. As you can see, these things don't really run completely fast. And then our amount here is animated. I tried to do this from zero to one and then multiply it by a range so that I could mess with how the range worked. But for some reason, if I did that, the value wasn't anything I could figure out what it was. Normally you can kind of see that selector value is like zero to a hundred. However, in the, in this case, for some reason, I can multiply this by a hundred, but I can't multiply it by selector value. But that illustrates another thing I've been trying to hammer home in the last couple of tutorials. You got to play with After Effects to figure out new things. So go out and do that. I'm Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below and make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.